Greetings, Internet. This is uh, Poser P. I am here to talk today about how to do essentially the same thing three different ways or a few different ways in VAST. And the, the problem we're going to tackle today is how to do a Superstar style sound. Hopefully through this demo you can and, and, and walk through, you can see uh, and hear different ways to approach the same problem and hear the differences and the similarities. Uh, you may find out that, you know, there's there's not enough difference to, to justify doing things in different ways. Or you may hear different aspects of a sound that you like. And I'm going to try and play them in such a way that that, that points out uh, some of these, these different aspects. So we're going to start with the factory program. I just put it up here on uh, patch number 1739, so it'd be next to the other ones I'm using. So I can just scroll through quick for the video. But this is um, the Fat Sync Orc or fat sin orc, excuse me. And it's the only modification I've made to this is I pulled off the uh, the effects. And all of these I'm going to be playing are without effects. So everything you're hearing is just the patches themselves or just the programs in, 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 cur in Kurzweil parlance. So I'm going to play some chords. I'm going to play some bass notes. And I'm going to play some notes up high so you can hear different aspects, how they do with chords, how they do with... Uh, articulated notes, and uh, and also you can hear aliasing and things like that. So we're going to start with chords, and then we're going to do bass, and then we're going to go and play high notes. Okay. So that's the, the fat sin orc, um, straight out of the box without any effects. So I have made a slightly different version. Uh, this one has on slider tw uh, MIDI 24 or slider E, it has detune. So the way they uh, the way they made this was this is just uh, six sawtooth waves going into uh, six filters. But if you go to the DSP control page, they manually detune these against each other. And then also, if you go to the mod page, um, these were detuned against each other here. I have put that detuning on a slider so that I can control it. And uh, I've set this one up already with a bit of detuning, and this is what it sounds like. Chords, bass, and then high notes. Now, one thing to note uh, before I continue is there are there's there's an LFO that's um, activated by mono pressure, and you'll hear that. So here's the chord. Now I'm going to play the chord with mono pressure. So if you hear that, that's what that is. Okay, let's go back to doing it. So we'll do chords, bass notes, high notes. Okay, so you hear that? That one doesn't have aliasing. Uh, it's, it's a nice sound and a, a somewhat, um, and the, there's a bit of variation from the, uh, from the factory patch. One of the other things that I did was I changed the envelopes. So this is also using a key map. And if you go to the amp amp page, um, we're using the natural envelope. If you go to the, the factory program and do the same thing on the amp amp page, they programmed in an envelope. Uh, and it says, so the envelope is a bit different, and I have that detuning control. So let's move on. So this one, the only difference is, if you go here to the Alg page, I'm using Algorithm 106 instead of Algorithm 6, which is what's being used in the factory program. And the reason why I did this is because this is a, a trick you can do on the PC3 to unlock the phase of the oscillator. So let me just play a bass note down here real quick. So yeah, it has a very sharp attack. Now, I've also put a bit of um, impact on there to sharpen up the attack just a bit too because I like a, a sharper attack. Now this has the same thing set up. A bit of impact um, using uh, the natural envelope just like the other one. The only difference is that ALG. And I'm going to play these low notes again. So you can hear that the, uh, the attack is different.
Okay, and and well, let me go ahead and do the standard chord low note high note thing again, just so that uh, we get that in there. Okay, now uh, I've made another modification to the factory program. This one uh, uses all the other things that I've done, uh, the phases unlocked and all that stuff. The difference is on two of the layers, on layer two and six, I'm using a PWM wave. Okay, so this allows me to modify pulse width. I have the width set at eight and I have an LFO controlling depth on that layer. And on this layer, I have the width set at 12 and LFO depth set to 12. So I have, um, oh, and also, if you go to the LFO page, um, let's go there. Where's LFO, there it is. Okay, so we go here. So I've got MPRESS assigning the, um, the depth, the min rate, and the max rate between 0 0.05 hertz and 0 0.1 hertz. So that's, um, a tenth of a second, or I'm sorry, 10 seconds about, and that'd be about 20 seconds to go through the whole thing. If I go to layer six, the difference is I'm uh, 180 degrees out of phase, and I've also changed these rates a little bit so that the layers aren't always gonna be in sync or anything like that. So let's do the standard stuff. No aliasing, you can hear um, how that sounds in the higher octaves and, and how it sounds in the bass. Okay, so let me go on to one of my programs. So this is NXT SuperSaw. I have patterned this um, based on a happy, happy accident after what I think Roland might have done in the JP8000 is not exact. Uh, I don't know what they did. Uh, I don't know that anybody does except for a few engineers at Roland. But um, the important part here is this quantize block. And uh, all of this seems like it's going to be wasted because when you go into this quantized block, it's set at 100%. But for whatever reason, um, th this works out better than using, say, like a square wave, which is essentially what's going to be coming out of that quantized block. Uh, and, and not only that, but quantized has this neat little thing where you can go above 100%. So I can actually go beyond 100% and, and on and on. And, and it adds, this is actually my mix control. So, so if you were looking at JP8000, this is what corresponds to mix. And this is what this sounds like. So you can hear the aliasing in the upper octaves. Uh, you can also hear how it sounds a little bit different in the in the lower octaves and, and things like that. Um, at the end of this video, I'm just going to scroll through them real fast and play them all back to back to back to back so you can get a sense of, of what they sound like um, without me talking in the middle. So let's go on to Duprasaw. So Duprasaw, oh, uh, one thing about this, this only uses three layers. I wanted to point that out. So in in that way, it is uh, more efficient than um, than the factory program that I was showing you. So let's go to Duprasaw. Now this one is not. This uses exactly six layers. The the one of the differences is that I've been able to because of how this works, fit in a low pass and a high pass filter and some uh, some other things. So so it's using the same number of layers, but you get a little bit more out of it. And this is what it sounds like. So again, we've got the aliasing and the upper octaves, and, and, and you can hear, I believe, some of the tonal differences. So the final way that we approach this is using the actual SuperSaw block that is uh, built in here. So if I go to 
the out page. There's super saw. So this is a vast block and then we're just going into the filters. So this is very similar to this guy except um, the, the, the main difference is we're just using you know the built-in stuff. So this is what that sounds like. This does not have the aliasing in the upper octaves, uh, and uh, and it and the bass is somewhat similar to um, to to my patches. So let's go on then to Duprasaw. So this is the same thing again. Um, I should also point out this is four layers, and the one I just played was two layers. So both of these are actually more efficient than either the factory program or what I did. Uh, in terms of the number of layers they use. And when you're programming, that might be important. So you might find, upon hearing this, that this the sound is perfectly adequate for whatever you're trying to do. It's more efficient, and, and you might want to do something like this yourself uh, for, for your own programming. So let's listen to what this sounds like. Okay, now I have a bit of detuning on Aftertouch. Um, I was kind of leaning in the keys there a bit, and so you heard it. So these are uh, a few different ways that you could approach this problem. I could probably come up with others and variations and things like that. One of the things I, um, I talked about when I was having this discussion was using noise to kind of uh, fill out the sound a little bit. Um, I personally like that. I'm not going to demonstrate it here just because I don't I haven't had time to set that up on all these and, and show that variation and that would double the length of the video uh, and I don't want to do that. So, but, but there are lots of other things that you can do. You can add a little bit of distortion. You can add a little bit of noise. You can throw in other things to um, twist all of these uh, ways of doing this uh, around a bit and to make them suitable for your needs. So let me go ahead, uh, like I said a, a few minutes ago, I'm going to now play through all of them. Uh, I'm going to do basically kind of the same motif, uh, just do them back to back to back so that you can hear what they sound like. So now I'm going to shut up and stop talking and just play.
So there you have it. There are, um, there's all those different ways that you could do this. Um, I just wanted, I, while I was doing that, I thought about one thing. I just wanted to point out uh, on my programs, um, I do this, I leave the dangling input to unlock the phase. So all of those are phase unlocked. Um, one variation on this would be to um, not have that dangling input so that the phases are locked. And then you get a sound that was somewhat, somewhat similar to uh, this one. In terms of, you have that very kind of solid clicky attack. So if you are doing something like this, uh, just keep that in mind. And, and the same thing is uh, happening here. I'm using algorithm 105 for this so that, so that the phase is unlocked. Uh, because I feel like that makes sort of a quote unquote fatter sound um, than, than having them all locked together. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that this has been informative. And um, I believe in my next video, we're going to start talking about effects because, boy, there's a whole world there um, in Vast, and and I haven't I realized that I just haven't explored it yet, um, and 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 shown you uh, all of the goodies that are in there. So uh, that should give you something to look forward to, and give me something to look forward to doing. And I will see you next time. Thank you.